the great resignation, the big reshuffle. Today, I'm sharing the conversation that I had with Emmy Award-winning journalist and host, Lena Wynn. She's sharing her story of reinvention. How do you walk away being the history-making news anchor, working in the number two market in the country, and you're working prime time on two networks? How do you walk away? Lena sharing her story of reinvention and letting us know today she is podcasting. We hear her happiness throughout this conversation. Stay with me, Lena Wynn and her story of reinvention. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Another episode, Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. As I promised you, I would bring on people who reinvented themselves, men and women. They actually reinvented themselves. Some are even going through what we call the great resignation. Today, I am so honored and pleased to have here with me Lena Wynn. Those of us from South Bay, those of us from Southern California, we know Lena Wynn because she was a part of KKL and KCBS here in Los Angeles as an anchor, four o'clock, nine o'clock. She (laughs) held it down and she made history here in Los Angeles. You may ask, why, why did she change all of that? She's about to give us her story and I hope I know that what she has to say is going to open up some doors in your mind and help you say, yeah, I can make a big change because you know what? Los Angeles is a huge market for a person that wants to get into media, newspaper, anything going on here. This lady did it for Emmy, four-time Emmy winner. I could go on and on and on, as you can see, (laughs) but it's all about Lena Wynn. So thank you, Lena. Thank you for being here with us. Margo, thank you so much for having me. Boy, that's quite a setup. I mean, no pressure or anything. Uh, so I hope I hope my story does inspire somebody because, you know, as you know, when we do this, if we just inspire one person, then we feel like we've accomplished something, right? So uh, so I hope I hope to inspire someone with my story. Um, I, I saw that, you know, you're interested in knowing, like, how do you go from having a career and might I say a successful one? I mean, you know, as you said, Los Angeles is the number two market in the country. Most people aren't able to get up in the top 10 market when you're in TV news. Um, and I was there and I did it for 20 something years. And for most of that time, I was really happy. This was my childhood dream. I wanted to be a news reporter and I did it. And then as things change, I found myself like, like really not happy anymore. You know, it really felt different. Like, wait a second, this wasn't, this really wasn't what I was thinking of when I wanted to get into TV news. And I, and it's not just TV news, it, whatever it is that you're into, even healthcare, like you yes. want to help people, right? You want to make them better. You want to heal them. And then some people find themselves in a position where well, we're, we're kind of not doing that anymore. You know, they find themselves maybe fighting with insurance companies or doing something else that really wasn't what their dream was. So it's difficult, um, I think, to recognize when you're no longer happy, you're no longer fulfilled and being able to like leap. And especially like I was, you know, nearly 50 when I decided I've had enough. Uh, It was scary. And it wasn't like an overnight thing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. No, absolutely not. And so it was scary and it was hard to walk away from a paycheck. And I think that um, I think a lot of people will at some point in their life find themselves asking, you know, it's like, is the money worth it? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's not about the money anymore. And it certainly was that for me. It was I'd stayed in it probably a little longer than I should have. Wow. I really wasn't fulfilled and happy anymore, but I was making a good living. And um, and I think most people would understand, well, you know, why would you keep the paycheck, right? But, you know, just shut up and, and read the script wasn't going to do it for me anymore. Yeah, do you have questions or are we like 
You can ask me whatever you want. I don't want to just jump in there, but I tell you, I want to amplify and make sure that people understand you were working and had a rooted career in the number two industry. People will die and, and go to heaven and try to get into this market. You were established, rooted, making good money, and it was no longer fulfilling. And at one point, it just was not enough. I read that you said it was time for me to be a mom. And I I can I think that most people can understand that once they understand the grit and the gumption and the planning that went into you making going through this reinvention process, you admitted that you were nervous about it. Who wouldn't be? But now that your mom and this happened in 2018, we are on the other side of you saying I'm out. I'm going to reestablish myself, reinvent myself. Lena Wynn, what are you doing these <laughs> days? OK, so what are the toughest things about leaving, not only just leaving your paycheck and like knowing that you're going to continue to get a paycheck, right? Is also that when I was on TV, like people, like you said, it's like you, you recognize me, my name, my face, you knew me as who I was. So it wasn't just a job, right? It was really my identity. Yes. I hadn't done anything else. I, you know, people say like, sometimes I sat there, I'm like, I have no other skills until I looked at myself and said, actually, what I was doing like required a lot of skill that's going to serve me well, regardless of what I end up doing, right? When you can talk to people, when you can get information from them, right? And when you can then disperse that information in a way that's easier for other people to understand, if you're a good communicator, mm -hmm. that's going to serve you well, whatever you're going to do. And so I learned that. And um, so it's all these tools that we have. You're not locked down to whatever that job you had was, right? All these skills you have are actually very valuable in a bunch of other things that you can do. You just need to sit down and think about it. Yes. You need yes. to recognize what you're good at. You know, sometimes we like go through the motions. You know, okay, I'm a writer, I write news, or I'm a whatever. I'm not just a script reader. I can do a lot more than that. Oh, yeah. So that's really important, not only to recognize that, but I think as, as a, for anybody, but you know, when you're nearing 50 and you think you're at the end, no, 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 no. I really felt after I made that jump, this really is the beginning. And I know that like, there's a lot of cliches and all that. It really was a new beginning. Okay, I'm going to go back to your question. What am I doing now? So I'm doing a podcast very much like you are, and I love it because I get to do the things that I love to do before. Ask people questions, like, you know, interview, like talk to them. Yeah. Not just ask the questions that a boss wanted me to ask, mm -hmm. right? That's important for you as a storyteller to be able to really ask the questions that you want to ask Yes, and do the stories you want to do. Yes. And yes. I was so sick of being politically correct. You have no idea. And then as you know, you've, you've seen what's happened to the media. Mm. I mean, it's kind of just, to me, it's, it's, it's been one of these. And then like in the last couple of years, it went kind of like that. Yeah. Um, so there is a freedom in not being, um, associated with the network, being able to really like in my own words, in my own words, being able to give an opinion if I wanted to. Yes. So, oh my goodness. Right. I was okay doing that, being objective. That was my job. And I think I did it well. People and still today, no one knows how I vote and I prefer it that way. You'll see me arguing with Democrats. You'll see me arguing with Republicans. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I am. I don't, you know, and so I was objective and I did, did my job well. But now I'm able to speak my mind, let my opinion be known and not have to answer to anybody. So yes. th that makes, it's just empowering. So I do a podcast and I, let me tell you, you know how, you plan things. Mm -hmm. They never turn out the way you really plan them, right? 
And actually, good things always evolve. So if you plan it and it goes exactly the way exactly the way you plan, I'm not sure that's such a good plan. Uh huh. All right. Right. So every everything good actually evolves. So I was going to do like I I wanted to still talk to people, and it was just for a fun idea to do a podcast. I knew nothing about it. I loved learning the technical part of it, uh-huh. right? Because all my whole career, someone else was taking care of the technical part. But gosh, at that age to learn something and be able to work with my hands to plug this in here and no, that doesn't work to plug it in there, right? It felt good. Yeah. And there's something when you get to that age, when you're still learning something and then really accomplishing something. So for the audio file at home, it's like, oh, wow. So she figured how to work a mixer. So for me, that was a big step and Mm -hmm. it felt good, right? So I learned the technical part of it. I was going to do, like, there are too many political shows out there. I mean, there's a podcast on everything. I had never listened to one before. And I wanted to do one on relationships just because I'm the type of person where all my friends tell me all their problems. People open up to me and tell me, like, really? Did you really just tell me all that? I've always been that person. So I wanted to do more of that. And then I had this conversation with someone I thought I knew quite well, and she told me the secret, and I was blown away. And she told me that she and her husband were swingers. And I was like, what? And I wanted to know more. I couldn't believe someone I thought I knew so well had this secret life. And that to me was interesting. And so the more people I talked to, the more I I found that there's this thing called ethical non-monogamy and everyone is so happy. And I'm like, okay, this is really intriguing because it sounds weird. Mm -hmm. It sounds unethical. And the more I learned, the more I realized how much I didn't know, which is always great. Um, And so now my podcast is called Consenting Adults. And I've felt myself grow in the short time I've been doing this. It's been just over a year, but I have felt myself grow. I I don't think I was a judgmental person, but I had perceptions, right? Mm -hmm. And the more I talk to people who are completely different from me, who told me things that I, I find myself saying, oh my gosh, all this stuff I've been telling kids when I go to you know, talk to kids at school about being tolerant of others and accepting people's differences, all that stuff. I mean, I am learning that firsthand and it's amazing. And, uh, you know, for 26 years, death and destruction, murder, mayhem, almost daily for my life. Don't need it anymore. I was going to ask you. Yeah. If if you want that kind of news, you can just flip the TV on, right? Lena, how did you do that for 26 years and keep your sanity? Because when I listen to you, you are happy. You are just vibrant. 50 years old. I heard you say that twice. So that is good. We're never too old, as they say, to go into our happy place, our place of fulfillment. We're always learning. But how did you make it through two decades of death, mayhem, uh, not too many positive things going on. That would have worked on my psyche. Right. Well, see, I didn't realize, and I'm a pretty strong person. I didn't realize how much of a toll it was actually taking on me until I stopped. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the news, you always have to pay attention to what's going on. You don't ever want to feel like you missed out or you missed something important. So even during my off time, I really wasn't off, Mm -hmm. right? I'd like on the weekend, it would be like, if I see smoke, I'm thinking, oh my God, that's a fire. I got to call the station. Or, you know, I'm always in that news mindset. Okay. And when I stopped, July 26, 2018 was the last time I was on the air. I have not watched a single newscast since then. And I realized, oh my goodness, the world doesn't revolve around us in the news. 
And yeah. it has been a load off my shoulders. I was breathing for the first time. I didn't realize how tense I was all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like when you talk to firefighters or police officers who on a daily basis deal with, you know, bad stuff. Yeah. You just have to, I mean, it takes a toll. It's not an easy position to be in. And you have to just kind of try to separate that. And it was hard to do. I mean, I think I was a, I am a very, I'm I'm a strict parent, but I'm so like, because I've heard of so many bad stories, it was hard for me to let my kids kind of grow and play because I'm thinking in my head all the time, oh my gosh, you know, stories on child molesters and pedophiles and murders and crime and all that stuff. And so it's taken me a little time to just, oh, kind of relax and chill that, yeah, the world's a bad place in some places, in some areas, in some instances, it's also a really wonderful place. And I want to find and recognize and see and experience the wonderful thing and let my kids experience it. So you are it's, living, it's been nice. you are living your best life. When you said goodbye, July 26, 2018, you stepped into your freedom. You can tell the stories that light you up, the stories and and have relationships with the people that you really really want to hear their stories. You really care about what they're doing. It's not just a piece for right now and I'm on to the next thing. So you stepped into freedom like you never thought you'd walk into before. Kudos to you. Uh, thank you. You know, I, I, I used to joke when people interviewed me back when I was still working in TV, my dream job was actually, I, I kiddingly always said, you know what? I wish I was working on radio so I can be like at home in my pajamas. I don't have to get my makeup on and stuff. And that really was a dream. I, and you know what? That's what I'm doing now. Like when I interview people, I don't have to be on camera. Uh, and then As you know, when you're first starting out, you're not making any money podcasting. I mean, very, very few people do. So, so you got to have something else. Um, So I do, I do voice work. I do commercials um, and corporate broadcasting. And so, you know, I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. Yes. And I am so happy where I am right now. So I can look back and all those things that happened that at the time seemed negative are actually a positive because it led me to where I am right now. And I've always believed that things happen for a reason. And maybe that's what helps me deal with things that weren't so great Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is really the belief that, okay, things do happen for a reason. This will work out in the end. And it has. So, so I have that, that I, I still hang, hang on to. Um, but so now, you know, I'm, I'm able to do the stuff that earns me the paycheck and then COVID happened. And when COVID happened, a few big companies reached out to me because they needed people to host these corporate events from home. Okay. I was able to do that. I mean, I was working like my first and the first one I did was for uh, NetApp, this big company. And we were talking to the CEO of Google and IBM and Microsoft. And I was the person leading that. Oh, wow. And they were paying ridiculous money. Yes. And, and, and so it just like came to me. And, I, and so I've been doing that and working with large pharmaceutical companies and doing these corporate broadcasts for them. And so then after the world kind of opened back up again, I then had this relationship. So now I was doing it in person. So I, you know, I've got the money coming in from that, but this podcast has blown up. You will know, and anyone out there who's doing a podcast knows, first of all, especially if it's your first one, you don't know what the heck you're doing, right? (laughs) Yeah. And and you don't know what to compare it to. Mm Because if you do the research, you're like, really? Like is a thousand downloads per episode is that big? So you know, in the beginning, you have to know how to measure your milestones. Yes, yes, and it's time consuming. Yes, it is. <laughs> My woman is like that's. I mean, <laughs> but the beauty of it, I am more. I am busier now, retired <laughs> than yeah. I was before. I had a set schedule, and really, that's all I did. 
now is like every, I'm doing a lot, but it's things I choose to do. Yes. And that is a freedom that not a lot of people have. Right. So I embrace it. I am so grateful that I get to do what I'm doing right now. Uh, And so, oh, it's just such a good place to be. And, And I'm telling you, it was not, not easy to make the decision, not easy to step away, not knowing how yes. you're going to make some money. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. And hey, when you get to be our age, if you can take a chance, if you can yeah. feel a little bit of fear, oh, that's awesome. Take a chance if you can. Right. If you can't take that quantum leap, that total leap, take it in, as I heard in someone say yesterday, baby steps. Uh-huh. But it's so important to take the chance. Just when you had you just hung on, I mean, 2018, there's no reason why you still couldn't be uh, an anchor. But look at what you, I wonder what your life would be like now, as far as being a mom, the impactful person that you are, you are really cashing in on skills and knowledge that you were providing for someone else. Now it's all turned around and working for you, which is so cool. So cool. You know, I used to think that, um, uh, some people were going to disagree with this, you know, working mom, first of all, working moms are superheroes. Yeah. There's nothing harder than being a working mom because you've got all your, you know, professional responsibilities. And then there's the more important stuff and that, that your responsibilities as a parent, that's a big job is the most, the most important job. So as a newscaster, I was gone every night. Mm. Couldn't tuck my kids in, you know, when they're babies and toddlers, they go to bed early. I'm still on the news. And it was okay for a certain period of time. And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I'm providing for them. Okay. This is my job. I can't be a mom if I don't have money, that kind of a thing. And then it was, well, wait a second. Money is not the important thing, not the most important thing. It is important. Anyone who tells me money doesn't matter is lying. True. (laughs) What is more important than money is time. You can always make money, make more money. Time, once it's gone, you don't get it back and you can't get it back. True. And with, I had a son who was going to start high school and a daughter Mm. who was going to start middle school. And so I really thought to myself, this is the time they need me. They, I don't think they remember, right? When they were four or five, six, whatever. I don't think they remember that I was working so much. But at this age now, they're going to remember if I'm not around. Oh, yeah. You know, like when my daughter starts liking boys, (laughs) I'm going to be there. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And, and, you know, going into high school and learning the life things. Yeah. I need to be there. And so things just kind of happened and and it just was the right time. It Mm -hmm. was the right time. I don't regret. Sometimes I do regret one thing, and that is why didn't I do this sooner? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I felt such a freedom. And I know that people, the people may not understand and may think that I'm just saying this just to make it good. No, I was so excited to go to my daughter's volleyball game. I mean, that excited me. I was excited to be able to take my kids out to dinner. Yeah. Most people don't understand that because, you know, when you work nights, your whole career, I never got to do that. And those are the things that you're going to remember. Like when you're, you know, on your deathbed, you're not going to remember all that other stuff. It's the time that you spend with family. And so I'm, I I just, and I don't say too much. And I know I've got, you know, former colleagues who are jealous. I am just, I'm so happy. I don't dread going into work. I don't dread having to do anything. Yeah, how many people can say that? Oh my goodness. It's magical. It's just all on your face. It's just coming through your spirit. Just you are 
this is what you're supposed to do to make that move was the move for you. And somebody else is listening. And I know that if they really listen to their gut and listen to you, they're going to understand she's speaking to me. She's singing my song. And I hope that they listen the way you chose to listen, make a plan and just just walk away. Walk away graciously, gracefully, and let life be what it is. Just this wonderful bouquet. I'm looking at the time. I don't want to hold you. I'm asking for one piece of wisdom. And you've given us so oh. much. One piece of wisdom that you give to that person that's listening. And they say, wow, Lena did it. And she was just, she's fabulous. But this last thing I heard her say, this really set me up to say, okay, I'm taking this thing of, of leaving seriously. You know, um, a lot of people ask me, and uh, you know, success is a word that people throw around all the time, and we all measure it differently, right? Some people measure success in money. How much money have you made? Or, you know, how nice is your car? I've got a lot of friends on Facebook who measure their success by how expensive their handbag is. Well, they're not really friends. Um, but we all kind of measure success differently. Mm -hmm. and if your definition of success hasn't changed, then something's wrong. So when you're younger, success means something else. But when you get to the age that you and I are at, success should mean something different than it meant when you were in your 20s or 30s. So when I wanted to get news, success was getting to a larger market, right? being in a big market, making good money, right? Being an anchor, being prime time. That to me back then was success. Yes. So when I got there and for a while it was very good at some point, and I don't think it registered until it was harder and harder to deny it. The measure of success for me changed and I had to admit it to myself. So to me, being able to spend time with my kids, being able to be the mom was to me success. Okay. Giving my kids the time they deserve to me, that's success. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm remarried now. My kids are in high school and one about to go into high school. You know, I don't go into work every day. I don't answer to anybody. I'm talking fun stuff to people. But at the end of the day, like, I feel really fulfilled. Like, there is never a wasted day. Oh, I get tired. <laughs> you know, there's something nice. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I've been going on all day like that. But I'm happy. And the definition of happiness has changed for me. So really, you ha always have to reassess what the word success and happiness mean to you. And if it hasn't changed in a long time, then I don't think you're being honest with yourself. So just be honest with yourself. Find that meaning that makes sense today, right? And then go for it. I'm mesmerized. I am mesmerized. <laughs> you have given us information that can only come from someone who's been there doing it, lived it, and decided this is my best life. Lena Wynn, I thank you. Goodness, I want people to understand that they can get Consenting Adults, your podcast on all of the major platforms, Apple, Spotify, wherever they get their podcasts, be sure to look for consenting adults. Sounds like a whole lot of fun. Appreciate it. Wow. It's hard for me to end up these kind of close out these conversations that are just so fascinating. I, I think that I know that it is time for us to hear from the men and the women who have reinvented themselves because we can speculate why, according to why people make these big changes, how they do it. But when we hear from those who have done it and are doing it and they are just thriving because of that one decision 
then that's gold. So what can I say? I'll be back next week with another pod, with a brand new episode. I'm Marga Levette, her business, her voice, her conversation. Thanks, Lena. This has been wonderful. Thanks, Margo. <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to her business, her voice, her conversation. A couple of things that I want you to do right now, go to my website, pick up a copy of her business, her voice, her reinvention, how I went from game show hopping to international show host, author and speaker in one year. Number two. Please freely listen to each and every episode. Share them out with your family, friends, the men in your lives. And then number three, get in contact with me, one of the experts that have been on the show, because I want to make sure that you reinvent yourself. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode here on Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. Her Conversation.